Hello, my name is John Speck. Welcome to this All 24 video. Uh, today, Coach Waterman and I are joined by guest coach Garth Melrose. He is the special teams coordinator and running backs coach for the Calgary Colts. Thanks for being with us, Coach. You bet. Thanks for having me, coaches. Awesome. So looking forward to this. We're going to talk some punt systems and schemes. Um, I'll just give you the floor to get started here, Coach, and we can get into it. You bet. All right, so the, uh, the slide we have up here is, is basically just the formation that I want to talk about today for, for punt team. We'll start with uh, alignment of, of all 12 players and then, and then get into the protection scheme here. Uh, the reason I like a spread punt is it's really easy math for, for myself, <laughs> first and foremost, and uh, it really helps with uh, teaching the math as well. So if, if we're working with high school kids or uh, even kids new to the game, uh, I find that it resembles an offensive formation at a basic level and, and kids kind of already have a bit of a knowledge um, with how to line up in this sense. So uh, I like the simplicity of it and I like the, the easy math as well. Um, what I mean by easy math is if we have a two returner scenario, uh, we're probably looking at six in the box. If we have a one returner scenario, we're probably looking at seven in the box. So if we can count to six and we can count to seven, um, I, think, uh, I think we can pick everybody up for protection. So uh, we'll start with the wide outs here. Uh, we call them gunners. Um, the, uh, the width can vary. Uh, the slot backs here, we call them wingers. Again, the width can vary. We can motion those guys around. We can stack them and do a number of things with those guys. Those guys are going to be primarily cover guys, and they're going to be gone with the ball. Uh, the five uh, quote unquote old linemen, uh, you know, our centers, obviously our long snapper, uh, we call our, our, our guards guards and our tackles tackles just to keep that terminology consistent. Our two up backs here, just a left up back and a right up back and obviously your punter back there. So with the up backs at six yards and the punter at 14 or 15, uh, that's the spacing we'd like. Um, and then three foot splits on the line uh, can, can be adjusted depending on the looks we get. Um, but again, that, that spread basic two by two look is, uh, is, is, is a formation that I, I really like. Perfect. And then uh, getting into the protection a little bit, coach, what kind of a protection scheme do you prefer? So, uh, you know, we can go man scheme, we can go zone scheme, something that I really like uh, is, is, a, is a combination. So uh, whether, whether we do a, um, a half man side, kicking to the man side or, or, or kicking to the zone side, I like to have a half man and a half zone side. Um, so uh, for the sake of this, let's just say we're always going to kick to the man side. In this scenario here that we have up, if we were kicking left, uh, our left side of the, the line uh, is going to be a man side. That will include three players, the left tackle, the left guard, and the left up back. Those three are going to be responsible for three men to the left side or the kick side. And then on the right side of our box is our zone side, including our long snapper, our right guard, our right tackle, and our right up back. So the man side with three players, let's kick to that side. The zone side with four players away from the kick side. But again, we can kick into the zone side if, if, if we like as well. And we can flip the protection if we want to as well. Um, as far as, as the gunners and wings, they're gone in, in, in coverage. Um, so unless a halfback is coming and those, those wingers slash slot backs might need to plus into the box, um, they're gone. So we're essentially looking at seven guys in protection to, to block six or seven. And if we get eight coming, then we need to bring someone else in. And again, as a sort of a, do you have a base core reaction um, when you see that it is that one returner and you're going to get that extra rush? Or are you giving a hat to the long snapper? Or what's, what's kind of your base reaction when you see that? Well, if we, get, if we get four players to the zone side, let's say, um, before I answer that, I should say that the zone side uh, up back is going to be responsible for the man side A gap. Okay, so uh, in that sense, if we get four rushers to the zone side, uh, if one of those guys is, is, is in the man side A gap, uh, we're pretty good there. Um, if we get four rushers to the man side, uh, we have a bit of a situation there and, and we can do a number of things. We can flip it so that that becomes the zone side with a, a terminology, whatever word you want to use. Um, or you can basically, you know, make sure that, that, 
that zone side up back knows uh, he's essentially going to be the fourth guy on that side to pick up that fourth player. So whether it's six or seven players, uh, and we can see this a bit better on the film, but whether it's six or seven players, I think we're good. It's, it's like I said, once we get into that eight rusher scenario, uh, we're in trouble, and, and that's when we would like to bring in a slot back. And, Coach, you know, one of the things that's always challenging when you have for your wingers is when that cover guy is uh, – or, sorry, the uh, blocker is just playing games with them, coming into the box, in and out. How do you kind of deal with that? I think down the distance and where you're at on the field is going to be a big part of that. Um, you know, if you're middle of the field or, or, or you're punting, uh, you know, from, from their 40 or, or, or something like that, I think it's uh, more of a risk on their part to be sending someone as opposed to, you know, be worried about their return. However, if we're in our own end uh, or we're in a, you know, third and super long situation, um, we're, we're going we're gonna to want to plus that guy in. So he's going to essentially become protection first if we start to see that threat. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can game plan for that and, and, and coach those slot backs up to know that, you know, protection is going to be first when, uh, when we're in trouble in the box numbers wise. Perfect. And I have, I have one last protection question. It's just, you know, on that man side, if you're getting some kind of a line stunt, um, how do you coach up your guys to, to deal with that? Yeah. I mean, as a general rule of thumb, we're going to stick with our guy. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and try not to switch too much. Um, again, that's also going to be personnel dependent. Um, if we've got some, some kids, you know, playing on that man side, uh, they're probably not going to be offensive linemen. So if we have some kids that understand zone or, or, or you know, switches and, uh, you know, things like that, then, then we're a little, little more able to, to do switches and so forth. But uh, uh, in my experience, you know, sticking with your man, uh, often, often works as long as that zone side up back knows, you know, he's going to have to help with that A gap if we get overloaded. Right. Yeah. And your up backs back there, especially on that man side, communication's key. And do you use terms like turn or leave or I got that kind of stuff? You betcha. Um, you know, and we could switch those terms up throughout the course of the season. Uh, you know, especially in, in, in my experience coaching, you know, uh, in, in the Atlantic conference and it's the same in our Prairie conferences, you know, we play teams twice a season and, and we see them multiple times. So you really get to know your opponents and, and that's when, uh, you can, you know, change up your rules and change up your terminology, but certainly that up back is, is the captain, um, specifically the man side up back. And, uh, and he's going to let those, that guard and that tackle know, uh, who his man is, however that, 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 that shakes out. Uh, and again, those guys can just forget about him. And so it's two versus two for those guys up on the line. That's great. Uh, why don't we move on to the next slide here, coach? And you can start talking us through uh, your coverage uh, concept here. You bet. Uh, again, this alignment here is, is, is great. Um, we can motion into a trips or we can motion into a tray away from the kick. Um, we can uh, stack these guys. So, uh, you know, again, Coach Waterman, when we talk about that uh, threat of that, that halfback coming, if we're stacking them, um, you know, that, that allows us to, to, to get a, a good angle on those guys if, if, if they don't widen out. Um, so, again, we can, we can motion around, we can move around however we like. Uh, once that snap happens, we're gone. And something I want to talk about here uh, at at the return point there uh, is the halo. Um, so in our Canadian game, obviously we've got to give five yards. Um, if we're looking at the kick side, you know, we're always going to have three players hot to the halo. And that fourth guy is basically going to be an ultimate contain uh, to the wide side of the field. And, and that can vary, but what cannot vary is, is having three guys attacking the halo. Um, they're going to fly down the field. Uh, they can, they can switch, they can stack. Uh, but they need a plan and they need to communicate. Um, and uh, so the first guy that is going to attack that halo, nose to nose with that returner from five yards, uh, you know, he's going to buzz his feet. And, and once that returner touches that ball, he's, he's going to attack quite aggressively uh, and, and straight ahead. The players on the side of the halo uh, are, it's very important to get to the depth of the returner. So if, if we're not creating that, that halo or that circle around that returner and we're more of a three-man line, uh, that 
makes our, our gunners and wingers susceptible to, uh, um, you know, to a, a blindside block that, that can, can be nonviolent and legal and, and open up that entire side of the field. So it's really important in that halo to make sure that our, our, our edge halo players are getting to the depth of the returner, not just contained. Um, and again, like I said, that fourth player being ultimate contained um, is, is, is secondary to the, the three man hot to the halo. Um, I think we've got the advantage with these four cover guys running down the field. It's, it's super difficult for those return players uh, to, to work their techniques when we're flying around all over the place and we can see where the returner is and they can't depending. We know where the kick is going. Um, so uh, again, it's, it's really all about that halo and making sure that those four players are going to get down there fast and, and those guys are, are going to be superstars. That's awesome. That's a great explanation, coach. I have a, I have a question on your hot player. Uh, is he a uh, take a shot guy? Does he have a leverage um, that he should try to keep field or boundary or is he just a uh, take a shot kind of player? Essentially take it like we want to give our guys the, the ability to go out there and disrupt that returner. Uh, you know, keeping in mind that we've got, you know, five, five or six, guys coming down secondary in a lane and if their guys aren't rushing the kick they're going to be joining the party um, at that secondary level so we really want to disrupt that returner um and uh and and make sure that 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 we we get them good and, and allow our our secondary lane players from the line to come down and, and and make a good sound open field tackle after he's been disrupted and off of his path um, but again the, the the key portion here is that we maintain that halo and we don't uh we don't let that returner take a lane up the sideline and then the last question I have, you know, for those uh, hot contained players, um, what kind of posture are they adopting when they get to their spot? Are they staying square, turning their shoulders? What, what do you coach those guys up on? Yeah, we, uh, I often, you know, try to link up that technique with our defensive coordinator, you know, terminology and techniques with open field tackling. Um, my preference is, uh, is that inside knee, inside foot up in, in, a, in a bit of a split squat position, buzzing the feet and, and, and attacking with fast feet. We don't want to be square uh, with our feet because, you know, that's going to flip us up potentially. So if we've got that inside knee, that inside foot um, attacking the, uh, you know, the outside edge of that returner, uh, our hips are, are able to potentially buzz to the sideline. If we do uh, break a little bit of that halo, but, uh, certainly if we're going to miss, we're going to turn them in. 